Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bulletproof Plane Series Part 2. Um, last week I introduced you to EPP in my new plane that I'd made and we really put it to the test and punished it really hard and crashed it quite a few times and it just kept on going. Um, I'm planning on doing a series of planes made out of this EPP. Okay, today we're going to kind of go over how we uh, pick our power systems and batteries for these planes and we've been getting a lot of questions about this in our comments and we've been getting emails about it so I thought I might as well go ahead and go over this before we start the first build um, of our new EPP series. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, uh, step one in uh, putting together a matched system for your plane is you usually want to start off with the motor. Um, as you can see, both me and Paul are into flying fast planes or planes that have unlimited vertical abilities and just high performance all around. Um, so we usually look for a motor that's going to put out a thrust level of about one to one and a half times the weight of the plane or the uh, projected weight of the plane. So say you have a, a 20 ounce plane, you're going to be looking for a motor that's going to be able to put out somewhere between 20 ounces of thrust to 30 ounces of thrust in order to get the kind of performance that we're looking for. Um, once you do pick that motor and find it, um, you're going to want to do some research either on the website that you're buying it from or from the manufacturer. You need to find out what the max capacity amp draw is of the motor. Um, don't worry too much about the, the max efficiency of it. You want to know what its maximum amp draw is. Um, this is one of the most important things when trying to find out how to match your system. Um, so once you get that information, write it down somewhere and save it. Um, step two to matching your system is you want to pick the ESC next, the speed controller. Um, normally we try to get something that's a little bit higher rated than the max capacity of the motor. So if the motor is rated at say 28 amps max capacity, you're going to want to get a speed controller that's at least 30 amps of max constant amp draw. Um, you don't want to go too much higher than the motor because most ESCs have a built-in cutoff in them where if they're over amped, they'll shut down to help protect the motor and the speed controller. So it's important not to choose a speed controller that has too high an amp rating or you could burn up your motor. All right, step three is choosing the correct LiPo battery for this system. And this is probably the most important one because if you don't get the right battery, you can have a very high chance of puffing it or burning it up. Um, normally what you want to do is you want to look at the max constant amp draw capacity of the battery. It should be rated at least one and a half times the maximum amp draw of the motor. So say you have that 28 amp max draw motor that we were talking about, you're going to want to go one and a half times that, which would be around 40 to 42 amps. So your LiPo battery has to have at least a rating of 40 to 42 max constant amp draw in order for it to be able to handle that motor and not puff on you or burn up. Um, a lot of the veteran pilots on the forum say that you should go even higher than that if you want to make sure that you get the maximum life out of your batteries. They're saying you should go two times what the max amp draw of the motor is. Okay, But me and Paul, we you haven't had very many problems just going one and a half times. Um, the battery life might suffer a little bit, but it's been 100% safe. We haven't had any problems with puffing or burning the batteries after we started doing this. Um, so I strongly recommend that you at least have one and a half times the maximum amp draw of the motor for your max constant amp draw on your batteries. Now it's time to use the formula to find the maximum constant amp draw of the battery. Um, every LiPo battery has a milliamp rating on it and a C rating. Um, basically what you want to do is convert the milliamps into amps and times it by the C rating and this will give you your maximum uh, constant amp draw of the battery. Uh, now it's time to do an example. Say I wanted to use a 1350 milliamp 30C battery with the setup we've been talking about. Um, I would take that 1350 milliamps and convert it to amps by moving in three decimals from the back and putting a decimal point. Um, it would make it 1.35 and then I would take this and multiply it by the C rating which is 30 so it would be 30 times 1.35 which comes out to 40 and a half amps. So it would mean that that 1350 milliamp 30C battery would have a constant maximum amp draw of uh, 40 and a half amps 
um, and that would be more than enough because that's what we said it would be one and a half times the max amp draw of the motor and that puts it right there. So that would be a good example. Uh, because I know this is a lot of information to take in, I am going to put a link in the sidebar over here to our new blog that Paul's been working on. Yep, that's right, I just made the announcement. Um, we've been working on, on getting our website up. It's still got a little ways to go, but the blog should be up and running by the time this video comes out. If you click on the link, um, it will take you to the blog where you can do a free download of a PDF file that we have on the information that we just talked about on how to put together your own power systems and pick your own batteries for your own planes. Um, there will also be an Excel spreadsheet in there um, with a calculator to help you find out what your battery's maximum constant amp draw is. Please remember that what we have up on the site right now is temporary and we do plan on making lots of changes to it in the future. Um, we will be making announcements as things develop, so please stay tuned. Um, now we're going to go ahead and get back to the Bulletproof Plane builds. As I said earlier in the series, I do plan on building at least a few planes out of EPP. Um, what I didn't tell you guys though is these are all going to be build-alongs. What I mean by that is you're going to be able to build the same plane as me without having to need any plans or anything at all. Um, I am going to list the materials that we're going to be needing for the first plane at the end of this video. So if you're interested in making a plane, check it out. Um, we will be starting this probably in a week or so um, because I'm going to be very busy this week with some other things. So I will give you a little bit of time to get together the parts and materials that we need to build this plane. I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be yet, but I know that it's going to be bulletproof, fast, and it should be easy enough to fly for beginners. So please come back next week to find out more and write down the list of parts that I put at the end of this video so we can get started when I get back.